Hey there, thanks for tuning in for another session of Campus Crashers Kids Corner. Today we're going to be painting this cool little elephant painting. Now this is a girl elephant, but you're certainly welcome to make it a boy elephant. For the girl, we painted her toenails, made her holding onto a little flower. She has a bow on top of her head, but for a boy, we could have put a baseball hat on, a top hat, whatever you want. A mustache, who knows, could be a unicorn type elephant. A uni elephant? Something like that. Anyway, we're going to lead you through the drawing portion of this painting that will begin painting in our elephant and you can put on the final touches however you see fit. I have an 11 by 14 canvas here and we're going to draw this out with chalk first. So if you have some chalk, that's a great way to sketch onto the surface of the canvas and then have that chalk kind of melt away so that it blends in with your paints. Sometimes pencil is a little hard to cover. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do for our elephant is to recognize this circle here for his or her head. And it's just, if this is the center of my canvas right about here, that's where the nose is at. So the circle is going to go a little bit higher. So I find the center of my canvas right about here. Okay, that's my center. And I know that my circle is going to, the chin is going to come underneath, or the circle is going to come underneath that center dot. And then I'm going to take the head up a little higher. Than that. I'm actually going to go a little higher than my original drawing because there's some what we call negative space up there, some empty space that I think can be filled, so I made the circle a little bit bigger. The next thing we're going to do is use a gum, gumdrop shape, kind of a rounded triangle for the body. You see that there? There's our triangle, but we're going to make it kind of rounded to soften it up for our elephant. And notice that the tip of the triangle would be up here. So right from here, I come down on each side going toward the corner of the canvases, of the canvas, and then I'm going to round that out. Next, we'll put two ovals in place on the corner of that triangle. And the fun part here is that you can make the feet as big or as small as you want, make it unique. Another little tip here is that I'm going to make the feet go down a little lower than the bottom of the triangle, so the feet appear to be coming at us a little bit, resting on the ground. All right, so that's kind of a cool little tip to create a sense of space for your elephant from where the feet are stretching out at us and where the body goes back. So I've actually lifted that line a little bit and dropped the feet down below that. Okay, so for the trunk, we come right from the middle here, and this is just kind of like a backwards letter J. If you wanted, you could make a J and go to the other side here. How about that? We'll try that. I like to change my paintings up every once in a while. So we'll make kind of like a block letter J. Comes down, and it connects to his, uh, his or her head. Okay, And we can soften that curve up if we want a little bit later when we're painting. And then if this is the center of our elephant, right here, if this is the center, we want these two feet or these two legs to be on either side of that center. So I make kind of like a long rectangle here and a long rectangle on the other side. And I'm not going to close that rectangle. That's going to be for the leg as it attaches to the body. And these are just kind of all approximate Kind of lines, you can always change them up. For the ears, these are kind of like diamond shapes. Do you see the diamond? And they're a little bit floppy when I finish them off there. They're not a perfect diamond, so to speak. So let's do that. Let's put our diamonds, which kind of looks like the start of a letter A, and then a V, just like that. And that's how we can make a diamond, nice and easy, like you're making the letter A, and then a V. And we connect those, and you have a, a, a nice little diamond shape. And that's going to be, a perfect start for our elephant. You'll notice that this elephant here, there's just a blue background. I think for this one, we'll make him sitting on a green surface, like he's out in the grass. We'll change it up a little bit just to show you how you can simplify or we can elaborate on our idea a little bit more. For this first part of the painting, I'm going to be using my large brush. It's a large flat brush, and I'm going to use a little touch of blue and a little touch of white. And going back and forth, I fill in the background. And I swish my paint side to side like this until I stretch it all out and it looks like I don't have any more paint to move around. 
Then I take a little touch of white, and I didn't even clean my brush yet because we're going to mix that paint right on the canvas. A little touch of blue, and then a little touch of white. And I stretch those paints out, especially with acrylic paints here, I'm going to stretch them out until there's a nice thin layer so that allows the paint to dry really fast. If I leave big drips of paint on my canvas, well, it kind of gives it a different feel, but it takes a little bit longer to dry. Now notice I have a little more blue in my painting than I do over here, so I'm going to start using a little more white paint and stretch that out. I'm swishing side to side, filling the background in, and getting in real close to my elephant, and I'm not going to worry about getting any paint on my elephant. I'm going to get as close as I can to my drawing so that I fill the background in completely and I don't have to go back and touch that up later. I'm not worried about a little bit of blue inside of my elephant because my gray is going to eat up that blue anyway. It will cover it up. So make sure you have a nice background that you're filling in and we're going to go all the way around the different shapes that we've drawn, okay? We'll be able to go back in and fill everything in with our gray paint and then outline in the very end and get our elephant back. So again, just a little touch of blue and I can spread that out and then a little touch of white. Hey, if you have any suggestions on an animal you would like to see us paint here in the kids' corner, send me a message and I'll be sure to work something out for you, all right? We'll do that one next time together. A little bit of blue and a little bit of white. And I'm using up all of that paint on my canvas. If there's a wet spot of paint somewhere, I scoop it up and I move it around so that I'm using up all of this wet paint and I don't have big drips on my canvas. We don't want a big, messy uh, painting because, well, then you'll end up getting painting and then if it falls and it touches the ground, it might get drips of paint on your floor or in your furniture. Hopefully you're working somewhere nice and safe here. Oops, I actually started to paint some blue down there, but I remembered I wanted to paint that green, okay? So, I'll stop painting the blue, which is kind of okay, because if he's sitting there and there's a shadow underneath my elephant, well, we can use that little bit of blue paint to make a shadow in our grass. How about that? A good artist isn't going to get frustrated here, especially with acrylic paints. We can just let them dry and then paint over it. So no need to worry. If you ever make a mistake, a good artist is going to figure out how to cover it up or how to incorporate it into the rest of the design. And you'll notice that my background is pretty filled in. I'm pretty happy with that. It's nice and smooth. I don't have any big drips on my canvas. One thing you might want to pay attention to is that if you have a thick canvas or a canvas panel, sometimes when you swish side to side like this, your paintbrush will scrape on the edge and you'll get big drips here like that. So you might want to wipe those flat if you have a thick stretched canvas like this one, you might want to fill in your sides and use up that paint so that you have a nice finished look. A lot of times there are available uh, canvas panels as well that are much thinner like this one here. And we don't have much of a side to this. This is a canvas panel. It's a board wrapped with canvas. This is an actual stretched canvas. It's made with a frame and the canvas is wrapped and stapled in place. All right, stretched canvas canvas panel and they work pretty much the same this one has a little bit of bounce to it because it's stretched around that frame but as I was saying we can get a nice finished look to our edges and you can paint the sides and the top let those dry and then when you're all through you can flip it over and paint the bottom so we'll give you a couple minutes to fill in your sky and then you can continue to paint the grass with us, okay? Okay, now as I get started with my grass, I'm going to clean my brush out a little bit. Blue makes green, so we don't need to worry about it being really, really clean. 
but I give it a little rinse in my water and I pat it dry on my paper towel. And then I take a little touch of green and I start painting it in underneath and I take a little touch of white and I fill them in. A lot of times if you have student grade paint, beginner paint, it might be a little thin, a little see-through. And to make it more thick so it covers the canvas, I like to use white because it's usually a thicker paint. It has more pigment in it. And it covers the canvas really nice. It helps colors to blend together and the white will help cover up some mistakes or if there's little changes you want to make. Now notice I'm getting my paint real close to the elephant. I'm not worrying about those chalk lines. We already practiced drawing our elephant. We know what the shape, different shapes are that make it up. So when we go back to filling it in gray, well we can draw those shapes all over again. And because I'm using white, it will help, it will make my green a little bit lighter, right? White is going to make your colors a little bit lighter. So I will let this dry and then I can come back with more green, no white, and make it a little bit of a brighter green. Okay, paint it in between the legs here on both sides of those front legs. I can paint around the sides, the edges and get my canvas looking good from all angles so when it's hanging on the wall in your bedroom or in your art gallery, well, you've got a nice finished looking painting. Now here's something to think about when you're making artwork. It is something called a light source. What light source is out there in the middle of this environment with the grass and the sky out there? What light source is out there? If you said sun, you're right, okay? Now that sun is shining down and you have to figure out where is it shining from? Well, it looks like it might be in the middle of the day here. So the sun is coming down and when I made that little bit of a mistake and painted some blue down here, I'm going to purposely do it now to make my green a little darker. And right underneath my elephant, underneath his elephant booty, and underneath his feet, we're gonna paint in just a tiny bit of blue to help that grass look a little darker. So I can put the blue down and then I can go back with my green and paint a little green over that. And it makes a nice little shadow where the light isn't hitting. The light is coming down, it's hitting our elephant, but our elephant is blocking some of the light from hitting the ground around him. And if I let this paint dry, I can make my colors a little darker. I'm really liking the way this is beginning to look. And if you have some yellow on your palette, you can even incorporate some yellow into your green because as we know, blue and yellow make green. So you can use blue, yellow, and green in here to give your grass a little variety. I snuck a little bit of yellow onto my palette and I'm not going to cover it everywhere. When you look at the grass outside, sometimes there's little patches and some of those patches look a little more yellow. Some areas are a little more dark green. Maybe there's some shadows in there. So I can put down some yellow and swish some green. And we're, we're going to let this dry because sometimes when the paint is wet, if you keep adding to it, it does nothing but move the paint around, swish it around, and just makes a thicker pile of paint on your canvas and we really don't get anywhere. I'm going to wash my brush off. Okay, I've cleaned my brush off. I can continue to use this big flat brush, but if you have another one that will fit into some of these small shapes, you can use that as well as we start to fill in a little base coat for our elephant's skin. Hey there, so this is called a filbert brush. This is kind of a flat brush. If I turn it this way, you'll see it's pinched flat. This metal part is called a ferrule, and it's pinched flat, and then it has a cool little rainbow kind of cut to it. This is really nice for blending in. If you have one of these, cool. If you don't, maybe you want to get one. So this is the part where we kind of go back to the beginning where we were drawing our elephant. And I'm going to grab my brush. If you have one of these filbert brushes like I have, or you have a smaller brush, we're going to take a little bit of white, 
and we are going to draw our elephant again. If you remember, we started with that circle. And I'm going right out to the edge here. And what we want to do is take our time, work carefully, and we're going to watch the shape of the brush. The shape of the brush has a side to it, two sides, the left and the right. As I lay my brush down, I'm going to put it on the inside of my elephant and I'm going to move the brush around until the edge of the brush is going along the circle shape that I drew. And I'm going to take my time moving around, moving around. I'm not rushing, there's no hurry. We wanna make our best artwork, do our best work that we can here. So in the middle, you can go crazy. And I'm just putting some white paint around there. But when I get to those edges, I wanna watch the side of my brush and I wanna pull that brush nice and easy, watching the side go up against the shape of our elephant's head taking my time, moving nice and steady, and I fill that in and then I can swish, swish, swish. Now, I have a layer of white in there, and now I can begin to put some black in there to make my gray. My canvas is wet. I'm not going to paint the whole elephant because that might dry and then I won't be able to mix. You could mix up a gray paint on your palette, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to take a little speck of black and I'm going to move it around on my palette a little bit just so I don't have a ton of paint on my brush because the black is very strong and if you put too much on there, he might end up a really, really super dark gray. So I actually wipe my brush off quite a bit to check and see what kind of skin tone here my elephant's going to get. And I move around that gray through the wet white paint there and fill it in and see if I'm where I want to be with my elephant's color here. I'm going to take a little more gray and put that in. And again, I take my time going around the edge. I'm getting a nice, clean, sharp edge around my elephant. And then I can go crazy and fill in the middle here. And again, I'm swishing the paint flat so that I don't have any, any heavy drips and that it dries pretty quick for us. Now I'm going to paint the elephant's body in. And I begin to, again, move nice and slowly down the side of my elephant. And I'm taking my white, but my brush is a little bit dirty with gray and that's okay. I can outline my elephant's body here and if my brush stroke moves into the face, we won't want that. So I'm going to just sweep all around that shape again and clean up the edge of the elephant's face. We're going to try to fill in the elephant's body as much as we can here in between the two legs here, in between the feet, right? In between on his belly or her belly, in between the two legs. We're just starting to get some paint on our canvas. There's some things that we need to kind of understand that are happening here with the elephant that will make your painting a little bit better than you might expect here because we're going to think. We're gonna think a little bit about that light that I mentioned earlier. So I'm taking a little more of my gray and I'm just filling in the body around the trunk as best as I can. If you have some small brushes, that will help you get inside in between those tricky shapes and fill it all in. Now my blue chalk is kind of blending in with my elephant's gray and I don't mind that at all actually because the uh, sky is out there, it's blue and it might be casting a little bit of that blue haze on my elephant. It's not going, it's not too much, but I can always let that dry and then I can go back over the body here and cover up some of that chalk. If, I, if, I, if you don't like it, you can do that. So I filled in the body. Okay, now because that light is shining down, there's going to be different parts of the elephant's body that are lighter or darker. The head is sticking out 
and the trunk is sticking out, so that can be a lighter gray. These two feet are sticking out, these two legs are sticking out, so that can be a lighter gray, and same thing with these two feet. So I might use more white this next time around to create my gray. If the body wasn't, you didn't make that dark enough, you can go back and you can add a little bit more black to your gray so that it ends up being a little more dark. If we painted this elephant right now with the same gray, we would start to lose all of our shapes. Sometimes changing the direction of your brush stroke will help so that you don't lose those shapes, but certainly if you're thinking about light and shadow, that will definitely help keep everything nice and organized here. I'm going to move along the trunk and fill that in with kind of a lighter gray. I have more white in there. And you'll notice that the chalk is also helping to shadow the trunk. I'm moving around. And I can still tell where that trunk is at because I've changed the brush stroke to go in the direction of the trunk. Same thing for these feet. I want them to be a little lighter gray, these legs, so that they do stand out. And lucky for me, I still have some chalk that can help to shadow the side of those legs. I kind of painted over his feet. I wanted his feet to be sticking down here in the grass. So I'm very carefully going to finish off his feet. But because that's kind of wet, I need to let that dry. Otherwise, I'll end up pulling too much green up into his legs here. So I'm just kind of sketching this out again, filling this in with a light green. Oh, I'm sorry, a light gray. And it's picking up some of our green down here at the bottom. So very carefully, I wipe that light gray into his legs. I'm going to clean my brush off because if I've picked up some green, I want to get the green out of there and start all over again with a fresh gray. I don't change my brush too often. If I'm comfortable with a brush, I kind of keep using that because I can turn this brush sideways, up and down, and get different brush strokes here. Or I can just paint very carefully and I can sneak the tip of those bristles in to small areas. But that's on you. You have to work how you want to work here and if you think that I'm sharing some good information and a technique that you want to try, well, go ahead and give it a try and see if that works for you. But everybody's different. I want you to be your own artist. So I filled in these legs. I'm now going to take my light gray and I'm going to fill in these big old feet over here. We're going to go around very carefully. I have a nice sharp edge to my feet here. I've taken that brush and I've Outlined around there, swooping around those big feet, filling that in. Whoa. And then over here on the other side, we're going to just swoop around. And I have a nice sharp line on the outside of those feet, those big ovals. And I have a nice thin layer. I'm kind of wiping the paint so that it ends up being a thin layer on my canvas. See how that green is showing through here? I'm going to take my time, make sure that that's a thin layer of paint so it dries, and then I can go back and cover that up with some more gray. Washing my brush off, I'm going to start to fill the ears in. And this is pretty safe here to make this gray, kind of whichever gray you want. I want it to blend with the head, but it's not going to get lost like the legs or the trunk would if it were the same color gray because they're just hanging out there. And I'm not trying to be absolutely perfect here for the ears. I don't want them to look like a robot. So even though we said a diamond shape, I kind of curved my lines a little bit as I was tracing my diamond shape. I let the shape of the brush be rounded in some areas. And then I fill the ears in on both sides. Swoop those bristles around. And as you get more comfortable with your brushes, you'll be able to move a little faster. But it's not about speed right now. We want to work nice and careful. You want to make sure that your lines are painted in without a lot of fuzzy edges there. If you take your time, you'll get a nice sharp edge. 
around your shapes. And right here, I have a little bit of my sky. I, I could make his ear a little bigger. Let's see if I can do that. Still make it look okay. I think that'll be fine. I could even drag his ear down a little bit if I wanted to give him some bigger ears. I can pull that tip of that diamond down a little bit. And I'm going to do that on this side as well. I kind of like that actually. And again, I need to let my paint dry so that I can put another layer on. As I'm wiping my brush, I can see some of the sky wants to show through. I don't want to pile on a lot of paint there because then my canvas just ends up getting wet and it won't dry until tomorrow. But if I put a nice thin layer on there now, well, it'll dry in about five minutes and I can go back and cover that up. Now, because I was pulling the ears this way, painting them in, I kind of have these brush strokes that went onto the head. Depending on how that looks, you might be okay with it, but I'm going to trace my head one more time so that the edge of his head is covering up his ears. I want his face and his head to be forward on top of everything, so that's the shape that we need to see that outline there, okay? My face, the head is nice and dry, so I can go back and I can safely put in another layer of paint. Now, if I wanted to think about that sunlight coming down, probably hitting him right in the forehead there, I can kind of make a brighter or lighter gray here. And then very carefully, I kind of soften up that white and I let it fade away. Just a nice, easy touch with your brush. And I can make a little bit of a brighter spot on top of his head. It might not be standing out too much there, but if you think about it and you're aware of these tricks, well, then your paintings are going to develop and they're going to get even better. Now, if there's a light spot on top, there's a shadow on the bottom. If you ever looked at a ball outside on the grass and you saw the light hitting it here, there'd be a shadow here. So because he's gray, I can make a darker gray and I can swoop a little shadow underneath his head like this. And with just a little bit of paint, I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit and that paint's kind of dry so with a nice light touch, I can actually fade a nice soft shadow here. I don't have a lot of paint. If you have big drips of paint, this isn't going to work for you. It's hard to control, but a nice soft touch. I'm barely touching the canvas. Okay, so I have my elephant kind of filled in with all the gray that I want. And if some of that background is showing through, well, I can go back where that paint is kind of dry now and I can get my different layers covered up again. I can go back, I can get my second layers in place where that paint is dry and now I, I won't have any problem covering the skin tones that I was trying to achieve here. So some of that green that was in the legs, because that's dry, I can fill that in. And give his skin a nice solid look, nice solid appearance here. If it ever looks like you're wiping the paint away, you have to let it dry, okay? One thing I'm going to do because his body here is underneath him, I want to make a little bit of a darker gray. So I'm using a smaller brush and I'm going to make a little darker gray here just to create some separation. You don't have to do this. At this point, if your elephant is completely painted in gray, you could go right on to outlining. But for a little advanced tip here and trick, I'm going to take a little bit of a darker gray and I'm going to place that underneath his chin. And that's almost dark enough, maybe a little darker. I added a little extra speck of black in here. So under his chin, under his trunk, maybe inside of the legs here, or around the feet. I add a little bit of that darker gray in there 
so that it helps to create a shadow onto his body. And then I can go back with my medium gray again so that I don't have real hard lines and I can blend some of that onto his body so that we just have a little bit of a shadow underneath his face around the trunk in between the feet on the body here so his body ends up being a little bit of a darker gray he's leaning forward a little bit so the sun isn't hitting him on his belly it's hitting on all the things that are sticking out like his legs and his feet and his trunk his head and his ears And there we go. Now I have a nice layer of paint on my canvas. It has filled in a lot of the streaks that were going through there that didn't look like it was covering. Some of the sky was coming through or the grass. But I'm pretty happy right now with the way his body's looking. And I'm going to let this dry so that I can come back and start to put the outline in place. I need to add a, a second coat here on the ears because I'm seeing some of the sky come through there. So I'm taking my time and getting another layer of paint around the ears. Again, that's the trick with these acrylic paints. They dry so fast that you just have to be patient and use them the way that they are meant to be used. Okay, a little thin layer, let it dry, that allows you to go back and cover things up. Now that's not to say you can't experiment and have fun. But for this particular painting here, well, we're trying to find, follow kind of a formula for this one. So that's why I hope you would kind of take some of the tips and tricks that I'm talking about here. All right, a little bit of a shadow underneath. His body looking good. I'm rinsing my brush off and letting everything dry. Okay, in just a moment, we're going to get on to outlining our elephant, but we need to do one more thing, and that is paint the eyes in white. If your gray is completely dry, you'll be safe to do this. I have a smaller round brush right now, and I'm going to paint two circles. Put those in place here and allow these to dry as well. So we're painting our eyes in and giving them a nice bright white layer. Remember you can always let that layer dry and then go back and put another layer on to get an even brighter white. Now if you're going to be painting a bow on top of its head or a hat, let's say it's the color yellow. Your yellow is going to end up looking green when you try to paint over your blue. So what you might want to do is the same thing we've just done with the eyes. I'm going to take some white here. Let's say if you wanted to put a top hat on him, like a black top hat, you'd be safe. But because I'm going to put a different color on top, whether it's purple or red, I'm going to put a a layer of white in place. Let's say, how about a propeller hat? That sounds fun. I was just going to make a baseball hat, but then I started to think about the shape. And I'm going to paint this white first so that it covers up most of that blue background. Let that dry and then you can Fill it in with the color that you want. If you want to turn this into a baseball hat, you can certainly do that. Just put a little brim on the front of the hat. 
or even if you wanted to put a tie or a necklace or whatever it might be, if there's going to be something that's on its body that you want to be a different color, it's going to be safe to paint it with white first and then cover that up. So I want, maybe he doesn't have red toenails because he's a boy, maybe they, they'll be yellow or white. So I'm just going to put his toenails in right now like that. So I'm going to let his hat dry so that I can paint some of my yellow on top. In the meantime, if you are ready to start outlining, I'm going to use a round brush. The thing about a round brush is that the bristles, when they are wet with paint, they will form a point. If you use this point very lightly and don't press too hard, you can outline with some really thin lines. Here's the trick. I take my brush and I'm going to dip it in the water and then I mix it into the black paint. It's not super wet, but I mix it so that it flows across my canvas a little easier. You might want to practice this when you're painting your outlines. Practice on a scrap piece of paper. But I mix that water up with my black paint so it's a little more loose. It's not runny, we don't want that, but it just fills my brush almost like an ink. And then with a nice light touch, I can begin outlining my, the different parts of my elephant. And here we go, I'm going to start outlining and it doesn't matter where, wherever he's dry. And I like to hold my hand sometimes just to help it steady itself. If you can lean your hand somewhere on the dry painting and then rest your other hand on top, this will also help to steady your hand. But I want to make a nice, smooth, flowing line. Okay, we know where our lines are at and we want to be very bold here. And when I run out of paint, I very carefully pick my brush up off of the canvas so that I don't just stop and get a big blop of paint there, all right? I load up my brush with a little more paint and very carefully, I'm going to pick it up where I left off, okay? And again, I, I can rest my finger or my hand on the side of the canvas and that helps to steady it. And then I begin to flow very easy around these different shapes. Nice and light. I'm not pushing the brush very hard. This is a little tricky. You don't need a very skinny brush. These round brushes, the bristles are made so that they come to a point, remember. And I can just flow very easily. And you don't have to continue to try to do the entire elephant all in one motion. My hand gets a little tired and I like that line so I very carefully pick my brush up off the canvas so that I can end that line and it looks real nice. It has a little thin and thick feel to it and that lends itself to cartoons really well. And I can continue going around the trunk now. Very light touch. I pick it up where I left off. I blend those two lines together and I pick my brush up. I pick my brush up. After I make a little mark, a little line I'm happy with, I stop and I pick my brush off. As I'm finishing up that line, I'm letting the pressure off of my hand. I'm finishing up the line and I lift off gently and the bristles kind of, they're pressing and then they sweep up off of the canvas. You're pressing, you're dragging that line, and then as your hand gets tired and you're finishing your line, you sweep and lift, just like that. Continuing my pinky now. I'm going to touch the canvas. And that allows me to steady my hand. I didn't need to rest my whole hand on top there. Just a little bit of pressure with my pinky and that steadies my whole hand 
And then if I'm resting my pinky, then I can just move my fingers like this and I'm much more steady and I can move in different shapes because I've kind of secured my hand here and I won't wiggle trying to hold my whole arm out there. My eyes are pretty dry. I could put another layer of white on there if I wanted, but I think they're pretty bright. I think that's pretty good the way that it is. And continuing, now I'm going to do his feet because they're sticking out at us. So I want these to be complete ovals. There's one side. There's another. Now the paint started to feel like it was running out because I didn't have enough wet paint in my brush. So I have to very carefully go back in and touch that up. And I hadn't, rest, uh, I hadn't been resting my pinky on the canvas. So this time I'm going to do that on my easel just to touch up this line that's a little bit thin. A nice light touch. I'm just letting the tip of the, the bristles of the brush, just the tip like that, drag across the surface. I'm not pushing real hard. With these round brushes, this is what happens. The bristles are shaped like this. They come to a point. As soon as you add pressure to your canvas, they splat and they widen. Okay? So with a real light touch, you can just kind of glide right across your canvas and make a nice thin line. If you press too hard, then they spread out and you get a big messy line. So it's very important to practice that. And now I can go around these legs. If you have too much water in your black paint, it will look a little see-through, so be careful. Don't add too much water. And again, it takes a little bit of practice and the, just a few touches here to fill in the body. And if I want, very carefully, I could use that same brush and go around the toenails, but I actually have an even smaller brush here. And we'll just put some little details in around the two. Sometimes you don't need to outline absolutely everything here. One other trick with your round brush, as you're stirring that up, you might have a big messy pile of paint on your bristles. What I like to do is twist, roll your brush. After you've kind of mixed that water up, I roll the brush and that helps bring it to a point like this without there being a big heavy pile of paint. We don't want a big drip of paint on the end. We want to be able to control our lines so I roll or twist the brush through that black paint and that allows me to draw my lines a little more freely. I like the eyes the way that they are, the white that, that we have there, so I'm not going to paint any more white in there. I'm going to mix up a little water into my black paint here, and I rest my pinky right on his face here. A nice light touch, and I can outline His eyes. Remember, don't push too hard, otherwise you get a big thick line. This brush might be a little too big to be painting these small pupils of his eyes here, so I might take my my other small, my smaller brush and finish that off. And we're going to put some wrinkles in his trunk. You notice here, the wrinkles, very important, would be on the inside. If he's bending, his skin here on his trunk would be stretching here because he's bending. So this would gather. So here's another little pro tip here to be thinking about is that that skin there would be folding and that's where the wrinkles would be. If I wanted to, his mouth is kind of right underneath his trunk, so I could sneak a little line in here. She doesn't have a, 
any evidence of her mouth, but if I wanted, I can sneak a little mouth line in here. I have some room. Then I could put one little line in there to make him smiling. And because his trunk is kind of sweeping upward, I feel like I can almost see the top of his trunk. Rather than using the bristles, I'm going to take the back of the handle and I'm going to dip that in the black paint. And we'll put two little nostrils in the tip of his trunk like that. His hat is nice and dry and there's enough white paint on there that I can begin painting that and filling that in. We're going to make that one of those little propeller hats. So I'm going to do some yellow and some red. I'm going to make the yellow on the sides. And this seems to be covering okay. Kind of looks like a beach ball. So I kind of swoop down to both sides like this with a little piece of yellow on each side. If I see some of that blue sky in there, I can incorporate a little touch of white into my yellow to make it a little more thick and block out that blue. But we didn't do too bad there. So I can go right onto my red. how much water you use or if you wash your brush out sometimes that water will thin your paint and then you have to do another layer let it dry do another layer so I'm going to fill this in I'm going to let that dry and then I'll outline it with the black while we're waiting I'm going to put a couple propellers on top and I use the shape of the brush to pull toward the middle of the hat Inside of the eye, it makes a nice little glisten, little reflection inside of the eye. It really gives it some life. Maybe a couple little lines down here on his feet to create some separation for the toes. And last but not least, going back to outline the hat. Nice light touch. Bracing my hand by resting my pinky on the canvas. up there holding it all together and there you have it thanks for joining me on this session of canvas crashers online we'll see you next time